My topic of bioethics issue discussion is the research of human embryonic stem cells. Human embryonic stem cells are um, so a type of undifferentiated stem cells that are often considered as omnipotent because they can proliferate into almost any type of cells. Well, with, uh, in order to explain how the ethical issues is centered around the research of human embryonic stem cells, let me first introduce how human embryonic stem cells actually work. Well, human embryonic stem cells are stem cells that is artificially acquired in the very early stage of human embryonic development. You know what? Let's switch up the setting. From the moment when fertilization occurs, when the sperm meets an egg in the oviduct, the journey of human fetal development begins. This image portrays this development by weeks. If we crop down the first three weeks of the development, we'll get this image. So, in the first three weeks, the most important day for the acquisition of human embryonic stem cells will be day number five, which is cavitation labeled here. From the moment when fertilization occurs, the zygote slowly replicates itself into totipotent cells. And on day five, it becomes blastocyst. On day number five, researchers crop out the embryo and we are left with this. Now I'm going to make an analogy between this embryo and M&M &M candies. So when the scientists crop this embryo out, they will be left a bottle full of M&Ms. Before the inner cell mass is extracted from the embryo, scientists will already have a medium uh, prepared for the embryonic stem cells to successfully and continuously differentiate after they are removed from their embryo uh, cells. So the the whole um, culture will be composed of a protein matrix added with some BFGF to uh, ensure the constant differentiation of the embryonic stem cells. And two kinds of proteins. One is called the tf 4 and the other one is called NANOC. Both of these will also ensure the survival or uh, successful differentiation of the uh, embryonic stem cells. After the culture is successfully prepared and ready for uh, for the inner cell mass to be extracted, now we bring back the embryo at day five. Cell mass will be extracted from the embryos and with the um, medium already prepared earlier, these uh, cell mass will be placed into the medium and it will continue to differentiate, to uh, replicate in itself uh, and uh, it will be preserved for later research purposes. When the embryonic stem cells are properly situated in the culture and it is ready for further scientific research, there's uh, mainly two techniques that uh, scientists usually use to stimulate the embryonic stem cell to differentiate into cells with specific functions. One is called homologous recombination, other one is called RNA interference. Every embryonic stem cell usually has three layers. First, uh, the inner layer is called ectoderm, the middle layer is called mesoderm, and the outermost layer is called endoderm. And through different, uh, through different stimulation, like the technique of homologous recombination RNA interference, the um, in embryonic stem cells can develop into these three and many other kind of cells. And the possibilities include neurons, blood cells or muscle cells, and uh, liver, liver cells or all kinds of other inner organ cells. And uh, the MMs will eventually grow into the starburst. 
Except from grow, uh, growing the embryonic stem cells into these different kind of specific uh, cells with different functions, embryonic stem cells can usually be used, also be used for drug testing and uh, study of birth defect. Of course, this whole um, process won't be occurring to a pregnant woman. Instead, it will be all happening in this petri dish. This petri dish will be where all the fertilization, all the extraction of the inner cell mass occur throughout the process of creating these embryonic stem cells. Uh, here are some special uses of human embryonic stem cells. First of all, it's for the treatment of heart disease. As there's no human heart cell line exists, uh, almost all medical research on heart diseases are done on uh, animals and they they rely on this similarity between uh, animals' response to certain treatment as to uh, humans' response to the treatment. However, due to hu human embryonic stem cells' ability to differentiate into any type of cells, scientists can uh, stimulate the embryonic stem cells to uh, differentiate into heart cells, which enables the uh, researchers to experiment different kind of heart disease treatment on these uh, specific uh, embryonic stem cells. The second use of human embryonic stem cells may be the treatment of many birth defects. Many de birth defects, such as the male development of the human embryo, cannot be studied even to a basic extent because of the immorality to study embryos post-implantation, that is after the embryos enter the uterus. And uh, however, with the help of uh, human embryonic stem cells, researchers can do much more in their, uh, in their treatment of birth defect. Furthermore, uh, human embryonic stem cells are also used to treat uh, eye diseases such as vision, vision loss. As the current treatment requires the patient to have some of his or her limbo uh, stem cell left in, the, in his or her eyes in order for the uh, surgeons or the doctors to regenerate some of the retinal tissues, uh, people without any limbo cells, limbo stem cell left, will not be able to receive any traditional treatment. However, with human embryonic stem cell special ability to develop into different kinds of cells, uh, researchers can figure out a way to um, stimulate the human embryonic stem cell to develop into retinal tissues that is needed for uh, eye vision loss treatment. Some people may ask, since there are so many good uses of human embryonic stem cell researches, why would anyone have any like ethical issues with this uh, research or this type of treatment? A large part of the uh, dispute over use of human embryonic stem cell comes from the debate over whether the embryonic stem cells should be considered as human when it is extracted from the oviduct. Here's an illustration of the pathway of a fertilized zygote. The egg and the sperm will meet in the oviduct. Here this is where the uh, fertilization occurs. After fertilization, through the stage of five days, the zygote would um, replicate itself and travel to the uterus. And on day seven, the implantation will occur when the uh, zygote enters the uh, uterus and starts its fetal development stage, where the dispute comes into the play. Some people think that because the embryo cannot uh, survive on itself before entering the uterus, so the first five to six days of the um, human fetal development should not be counted as a part of the human's life. So technically, on the first five days, the human doesn't exist. And this is where it meets the another argument that humans' life uh, starts at the moment when the sperm meets an egg, that is when the fertilization occurs. Let's explain this di dispute with the instance of a stapler. The scientists were arguing that uh, the embryo should not be considered as human when they're removed from the uterus or they have not gone to the uterus stage should not be considered as human. Just a stapler cannot work without the actual machine. If you only have the pins, you wouldn't really do anything with the stack of paper. However, some uh, scientists argue that 
with this little pin, you can actually bend it and put it through the paper, which will actually do the same thing as the, as if it's without a stapler machine. And uh, put it back to the em to the embryo dispute. Sometimes some scientists think that uh, because you can cultivate a culture for the embryo to survive, you can actually put the embryo that's extracted back into a culture and you will actually grow into a human, which makes it unethical for scientists to remove them before uh, or in any time of the fetal development. Let's draw a diagram about how uh, some of the important days of the uh, human fetal development occurs. So there's day one, the first zygote uh, fertilization, where the zygote actually is being made. And then on day seven, which is implantation, when the zygote trans uh, travels into the uterus, week 10 is when uh, the, the, the fetus itself is almost filling the entire uh, uterus, and week 38 is when birth takes place. So um, as this travels up the graph, the uh, definition of a human changes. Some people think that at this point of time, day one, it is when human is uh, being is actually being made that human actually has its own identity. Some people think that week one, when implantation occurs, is when human should be considered as human. And some people think that week 38, when human is actually being born into the uh, into the world, when they are considered as individual human beings. So where we should draw the line of the definition of human actually makes a big difference in this ESCO debate about the research in embryonic stem cells. Considering the ethical issues that I just mentioned about human embryonic stem cell research, Here's a uh, article called A Case Against Federal Funding of Human Embryonic Stem Cell Research by a guy called David Prendis. Uh, this article states a, very, a few uh, reasons for replacing human embryonic stem cell research with just adult stem cell research. Quoting from the uh, National Bioassist Advisory Commission that in our judgment, the derivation of stem cells from embryos remaining uh, following fertility treatment is justified only if no less morally problematic alternative are available for advancing the research. So what, he, what the uh, commission is saying that is that human embryonic stem cells research should not be allowed unless there's a certain way, there's no, no way other than using em human embryonic stem cells to uh, further the research of a specific uh, disease or to develop a certain treatment. Uh, throughout the article, Prentice have several different arguments for uh, why uh, researchers should, should choose to use adult stem cells instead of embryonic stem cells. First of all, uh, adult stem cells have a um, very similar variety of tissues compared to human embryonic stem cells. Secondly, is that there's a great amount of supply of adult stem cells. Thirdly, there's a human embryonic stem cells have a less risk of carrying certain genetic disease because for human embryonic stem cells, researchers are not sure if the cells are containing any mutations or any disease, even though they can check the genetic makeup of the donating parents. However, for adult stem cells, they already have all the information and will greatly eliminate the chance of having a genetic disease. Uh, pass on to the treatment of the, the patient of the treatment. For the last argument, Prentice said there's a lot of past success of uh, human adult stem cell research, so human embryonic stem cell may not be the uh, necessary alternative in Prentice's point of view. So having different points of view on whether human embryonic stem cells research are ethical, here my uh, analysis according to the four principles of bioethics which is autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and uh, justice. Well, so first of all, autonomy. Autonomy means that the respect of the people's choices or the individuals that's involved in these issues. 
their, whether their choice is respected. The in vitro fertilization process is carried out uh, in specific clin clinics uh, with the consent of the gamete donors. Uh, so uh, none of the uh, development of the human embryo stem cells is uh, without the consent of the donor of the gametes. And uh, in addition, there is there, as there is no way to ask whether the baby, as is not being born yet, whether he or she agrees with this treatment, I think it is a not very big violation of autonomy in this case. Here's the principle of bioethics in that chart that I made up. So from a scale from 0 to 10, 10 being the not the perfection of ethics, as there is no such thing as perfection in ethics, but the most morally righteous thing you can possibly do. Um, autonomy, according to uh, the argument that I just presented, will earn a index of nine. Uh, the second ethical principle is uh, non-malfeasance, which means uh, do no harm. And uh, the original intent of the donation of the gametes is for specific scientific research rather than having a child uh, on the aspect of the donors. Uh, in this case, the scientific research possibility um, drastically overweighs the cost uh, given that the donors participate in this donation voluntarily and the amount of benefit that the research can bring can certainly uh, be beneficial for all the society and doing no harm. Uh, the, the one maybe shortcoming of this argument is that the baby might bring happiness to the society, but the whole intention starts out from the uh, from the donation for scientific research. For non malfeasance I will say about seven. The third principle of bioethics is beneficence, which is uh, trying to do good. The research of human embryonic stem cells are always intended for the best uses possible. Scientists are in hope to find cures or treatment for uh, many diseases or uh, defects. Uh, and however, there is the certain possibility that uh, researchers can pass on unwanted genetic disease to the patient through the tre treatment, as I mentioned earlier. For beneficence, six. And this brings us to the final principle of bioethics, which is uh, justice. Justice means the equal distribution of resources or the benefit of the uh, treatment. Well, the re relative scarcity of embryonic stem cell treatment might cause some competition for the treatment. However, the general finding of the research should be beneficial for all the public. For justice, maybe seven. Judging from the four principles of bioethics, the embryonic stem cell research in total earned a 29 out of 40. So I will say the uh, assets behind embryonic stem cell research is quite positive and uh, there's a lot of things, good things that will come out of the embryonic stem cell research program. Mm -hmm.